Hey everybody, it's Austin. We are back in the garage today. It's cold out, 27 degrees, 38 degrees here in the garage. And we have some exciting news. We got, I got, the Rough Country speedometer calibrator for my 2019 Tundra. And I'm super excited. We get to utilize this to um, address the issues in the truck with the new tire size that we've had for over a year. Um, when it comes to fuel economy, uh, transmission shift points, as well as correcting the odometer and trip. Because if you think about it, if you have bigger tires, but the computer is programmed for smaller tires, every full circumference of your wheel is taking you further on a bigger tire than the stock smaller tires. So as you travel 100 miles with the tires that I have on it now, it's approximately only 95 on the truck. So that's something that we want to change to make sure every um, number is accurate on the truck and we're getting those accurate MPG numbers because hopefully it brings them up because they are terrible right now. So I'm going to show you guys what we had to do um, to get this to work and we're going to plug it in today and see how it works over the next week or so. So let me show you what comes in the package. All right, so this is the Rough Country Speedometer Calibrator serial number 196. 7976 and i will have this linked in my amazon affiliate links down below in the description just click on the amazon link and it'll take you to a web page that has most if not all of the parts that i've purchased for the truck that are from amazon in that store as well as some camping things that i enjoy um, just to have you guys uh, be able to check out those parts all in one place so i'm going to open this up and show you what's in here so when you, when you get this, you open it up and you've got your module and that's what's going to be um, what you're going to be programming to plug into uh, the truck and that's what's going to reset uh, your computer essentially or interrupt the computer. And you've got some instructions that show you um, just how you go about um, config, configuring uh, the calibrator and you just go to Rough Country's website um, and it'll walk you through how to do that. It's pretty easy. Um, but one thing that uh, is kind of a pain is you have to have a PC computer. So if you don't have that, like I didn't, um, I got this over a month ago, but ended up needing to wait till I went to my uh, dad and grandma's house in Texas and was able to use my grandma's computer who has a PC and get this program to the new tire size. Because this factory truck, the stock tires, um, I believe are 265... 70 R18s. I believe that's right. Don't quote me on that. But my new tire size is a 295 70 R18. So we had to plug in those numbers um, into the program that you download on the off of the Rough Country's website. You just it's super simple. It pulls up the the uh, downloaded software and you plug in uh, the the previous tire size and the new tire size. Uh, it gives you the option to re gear. Um, but from what I've heard from subscribers and people in other videos is that the re-gearing is not uh, something that gives you a, a super helpful result. So I just suggested for tire size um, and these tires online sometimes say 35 inch, um, but per the programming software, it was 34.28. So just to give you an idea of what that difference is in comparison to the factory 32 inch tires. So... I'm going to show you guys what all comes in the box and we'll get it plugged in. Sorry for jabbering. I just wanted to explain all that we had to go through, but I'm not down there to show you what it looked like. So here's what's in the box. So we've got uh, the micro USB cable, which you can use your own if you need to, um, but you just use this to plug into this little, uh, little programmer right here. Plug it in, plug it into the computer, and you can download the software. That's super easy. This was the cord for it, or the packaging for the cord. And then you've got your uh, OBD2 port plug. And so this is what this will plug into um, your OBD2 port down below. And then you've got your zip ties. This actually isn't an OBD2 plug, I don't believe. So I'm going to have to look up where this goes. But I will definitely show you guys where that goes and what it looks like when it's plugged in. And hopefully, 
we'll get some some new numbers over the next tank of gas because I'd really like the fuel economy numbers to be a little bit more accurate. So stick with me and we'll see where it goes. All right, so it's the next day because it's much warmer outside and I didn't want to break anything in the truck that's plastic by prying it apart when it's super cold out. So we're in the truck today and we're gonna go ahead and get the speedometer calibrator installed. First thing you wanna do, unplug your truck battery so we don't fry anything electronically because that would suck. All right, so you go over to your battery and you get your little super cool socket set by Vera. It's a German company, so W's or V's, Vera. And go ahead and take out your 10 millimeter socket because that's what batteries always are. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna remove the positive terminal. All right. If you guys wanna check out this kit, it's super great. It's a little pricey, but it's on my Amazon store. I used the heck out of it all Christmas when I was out of town. It's super handy. Let's go ahead and get this battery terminal taken off and we'll jump back inside. Got my little tiny socket, socket driver, ratchet. All right, so now that we're in the truck, we go ahead and pull up the trim piece and I will put the instructions to this that I got off of Rough Country's website in the description. This just pops up. And I did see, ooh, that took the wiring harness with it. Let me go ahead and use two hands hold the wiring harness down and pull up the trim. So we got that up and this just got, this clip stayed hooked to this. So I was lifting this up as I was trying to pull it out. So I need to use two hands. Got that piece up. And now we can go ahead and undo that little screw right there. It's just a little plastic nut that you just unscrew with your fingers, super easy. I had to do this when I installed the remote start video if you haven't seen that. Take that off, put it in your center console, and then you can pop this off. I think all we're, all we're doing this for is popping this out so that we can pop this down, which I did see one video that said you didn't need to do that, but I'm gonna do it because that's what the instruction said, and I don't wanna mess anything up. Apologize for my sniffling. There we go, so you just pull that out pin there I actually think I just broke that it goes right there right there so be careful on that but we can go ahead and slide that back around it when we put it back on and it'll hold it in place just fine so I'm gonna set these over here so the little socket comes into hand again so we're gonna loosen these two 10 millimeter bolts here and right there. Go ahead and loosen those and then this will pop out. You can see it's starting to pop out right there. You just pull it out and you let it hang there and we don't need to remove it any further than that. You don't need to unhook any of the wiring and then we'll move on to the other trim pieces to get it installed. All right, those two bolts are out and safe in the door handle. Go ahead and just pop this out. I just did this on my dad's truck and it came out super easy. All right, so get that pulled out. Go to the other side. I don't wanna break anything. Let me find the spot where it's good to pull on. All right, so I have the lower part pulled out across there. And if you have one of these little clips right here, fall off make sure that you put it back on because that's what allows it 
to clip into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it just back on like that. And then this pops out of the place and it'll just hang there. You can see some of my other wiring that's in here, like for the remote starter. It's right there. The purple cords stand right where it should be. And now we move on to pulling this out, which I think you just pull. Yeah, you just pull on. Go ahead and pop that out. Got your four clips on there. Make sure it goes back on that way. And then you can go ahead and pop this out. Well, it didn't break. So that's good. So you got three clips on the bottom and then two things that slide it into place along the top. That's pretty well secured for such a tiny piece. Now we move over here. And we go ahead and pop this out. Sorry. Focus. Go ahead and pop this trim piece forward. Just like that. Got some cables in there. This would be a good time if you want to put in any. Oh no. I just dropped the whole kit. Let's reach down there and grab that in a second. This would be a good time if you wanted to put in any switches right there. You have good access to it. And then you got your brake controller. That's cool. And then you go ahead and move this too. And that helps if you pull straight out. So if you can get your fingers up behind there. All right. And now we're on to the meat and potatoes of it all. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my steering wheel down and there are two push pins which if you have a tundra sorry for my finger if you have a tundra you know these little push pins right here you just push on the center of them sorry the lighting is really bad let me see if i can get it from over here sorry I'm trying to get a good angle for you guys if you push on the center of that pin right there, it uh, pops out. So let me see if I can do that with my handy dandy little screwdriver here. So let's go ahead and push up on the middle of that and see how it kind of releases. Go ahead with this one. All right. Go ahead and get this down, but try not to lose those pieces here. I'm gonna refer to the instructions and see if there's a quick way to get our fingers in there to pop that down. All right, so I got you on the tripod now. So you're supposed to pull out these little clips that we just pop the holes in. And I don't know how I can do that, but I'm gonna try to use my pry tool and get in here. Maybe push this down and that'll ease them out. Maybe. I want to mar this up though. Whoa, that just popped right there. That was good. So this little bezel starts coming out around here. Let's see that right here. This little bezel starts pulling out. So now I'm going to see. Make sure I got those popped out. So I can. Remove this. That's indented. That's indented. And. Pull this one out. So this is attached to a little curtain down here. All 
our goal now, we have to do something with that. And I'm not sure what that is. So here's our bezel that came out. And you can see it's attached to a little piece of fabric that keeps you from seeing all your steering column when your wheel goes in and out. So now we're gonna figure out which piece we need to pull off to make that come out of place because then we may not need to actually. It just may make it a little bit more tricky because you can see there are four bolts there 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 and then down here right there behind there that white piece that hold in your gauge cluster so we're gonna go ahead and figure out how to get this out of the way so we can get to those bolts we're gonna need an extension sorry little socket guy you're just not big enough all right, so the instructions say that you push on on four locking tabs that remove this cloth apron from this bezel. And I had no idea what that means, but let me see if I can get it on camera. There's a spot. Right there where my finger is. You can't see it, but there's little, right there. There's little tabs sticking up through there you push in on and there's four of them so you just kind of run your finger around the back here and I feel one so go ahead and push in on it I think that's what I'm, I'm doing There's one. All right, let's see if we can see this one. All right. Oh, it's hard to see. It's right there, right on the edge. It's the tiniest little thing that you just push through. Right there all it is it's just this little little clip right right there just pushes up in between and there's four of them all right so we got all four adjust the steering wheel so this comes out Now we can go ahead and remove those four bolts, and pull this baby out to plug in the kit right behind it. All right, so the little kit came in handy again. It's an eight millimeter kind of day. So you go ahead and just take these four off and then we can pull the gauge cluster out of here. And they're really short, so don't drop them. All right, so it was an eight millimeter socket. My little kit came in and saved the day. I recorded all of this, but then my phone shut off. So I removed all four bolts, top two, bottom two, and make sure to be careful when you're pulling them out because they are really short. Let me show you one. So just don't drop them. And we'll go ahead and get this pulled forward pretty crazy i'm gonna wipe it off while, while i have it out too that'll be nice i'm not sure what the best way is let's see if top out works a little bit better So it comes out that way. Put 
with them. I don't want to pull on anything too hard. While we try to get her flipped over. And the wires are, there we go. Oh my gosh. That was nerve wracking. So we got it turned over. And now we get to unplug this, plug it into our system, and we're home free. I'm going to go ahead and get that plugged up. All right, so we've got our kit that comes from Rough Country and our little module. And so what you go ahead and do is plug in your little module, small port to small port, until you hear it click, which it did. And then we're going to go ahead and unplug this one from the back of the speedometer cluster. And you can see it's really narrow, so we're going to go ahead and plug it into the female end here. Make sure the clips are the same side up. That looks right to me. Is this the right? Hopefully it's the right one. Oh. Had it upside down. Alright. So the little two holes go on the side with the push-in clip. That worried me. I thought I had the wrong one. Go ahead and push that in. So it clips. And then you go ahead and plug this one in and figure out what's the best direction to lay the wires down just figure out what works best for you guys in your truck I think I'm going to lay it lay it like that I don't want to put any tension on anything Go ahead and get that plugged in. It's all snapped in. And they give you some zip ties, so we're going to go ahead and get those to hold this in place. What some people have said they've done is taken the cord that they used to program it, which is just a micro USB cord, and plugged it into this in case they needed to update the programming at a later time. So they don't have to take this all apart. And I think that might be a good idea if I can find a proper way to route it through here. So if that's something you guys want to do, have at it. Let me see. Let me see what the best way is for that. That may work right there and that's what some people have said is the only reason for taking off the bottom part is so you can get to this cable so i'm just pushing this cable sorry being a bad videographer today i'm just pushing this cable right down behind here but then I'm going to have to go down and make sure it's not messing with anything. So, go ahead and drop that down so it's down there. And then uh, we're going to get this zip tied together. I think I'm just going to zip tie this like that so it stays flat. And put the little module uh, back there too. So, that's something I'm going to... Let me get that zip tied up and then we'll see how everything lays. All right, so I got it zip tied. I got the cable plugged into the module. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a couple screws and then we're gonna get the battery plugged in so I can go ahead and start it and make sure it works before I put everything back together. I apologize, the lighting's bad, it got dark on me. All right, 
make sure this little apron flap thing is where it needs to be. Hey everybody, so it's a couple days after and I'm sorry I wasn't able to finish filming, putting everything back together on the dash. Phone ran out of storage, too much filming, and just had to get that put together while it was dark. So, wouldn't have been great filming anyways. Just follow the steps in reverse order and it all goes back together pretty easily. But now that we're in here, I wanted to show you guys what the speedometer says as we're driving. Because before, uh, the speedometer was a little bit off, um, primarily at higher speeds. Um, we were about three or four miles per hour um, higher on my speedometer on the truck than we were um, actually going. So I want to show you guys what it looks like now. Uh, we're just going in town speeds, but I wanted to show that to you. So like I was saying, it was one mile per hour higher than what Waze was saying. And I'm not certain if Waze is the end all be all of accurate speedometer speed, but in comparison to that, it has dropped um, a few miles per hour um, on my gauges. So that's awesome. It's showing it is acclimating for the tire size and you could tweak that a little bit more. Um, I was able to leave the cord connected to the speedometer calibrator so that if I just popped off the lower dash panel, I could plug it into my computer if I had a PC laptop and go ahead and adjust that um, tire size just a little bit to make it exactly the same. Um, but I think we're really, uh, you know, fighting for fighting, splitting hairs here. So um, overall, it's really great. And it has, it has adjusted my um, overall miles per gallon and things like that. I'll put in a couple screenshots of some miles per gallon that I typically get um, and what I've been getting now. And that will really, um, that's been really nice to see. All right, so as I was saying last night, it's been really nice that the miles per gallon has adjusted to this tire size because I'm seeing MPG um, mileage that is way better than what I typically get um, driving to and from work. Um, in town, it seemed to be pretty similar, but um, actually that's not true. It's been pretty good. Uh, let me put in a screenshot right here of what I got um, on my way home today. And um, typically I'm getting about, I was getting about 13, um, 13 to 14, probably 14 on a, on a decent day um, on just a trip home because I'm driving highway speeds, not pushing it. And so that's awesome. It's nice to see that it's recognizing um, appropriate mileage um, and fuel economy. And of course, it's not going to change what you're paying at the pump, but it is going to, um, it's telling us that we are driving further uh, than what it was showing with the smaller size programmed into the computer. So it'll it'll uh, be a more representative of where we're at, and that's really nice. So it's been a good, good upgrade so far. I'll keep you guys posted if there's anything I noticed down the road that may be um, something I want to change or if we have any issues, but really pleased with it so far. The install was pretty easy, a little bit more technical than I expected, um, just having to remove the dash panel, but it worked out okay. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you need me to post any updated videos on any part of the process um, or where the cable was run through, anything like that, let me know down below. And let me know if you guys have done a different speedometer calibrator or if you have this one as well. And let me know your thoughts. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I'd love to... Uh, hit that next thousand mile mark. Uh, we're at 3,500 right now. And I'd just love to keep growing with you guys. Hope to see you on the next one. Take care. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you guys later.